Hi, Don here. Welcome to Podiatry Practice Mastery. I have Al here from the Marketing Switch. Welcome. Hello. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I think this is like the second episode. And um, we met some time ago kind of uh, with uh, uh, Dan Kennedy and kind of marketing and, and, and things like that. And if you guys haven't um, joined uh, Al's email, I always recommend you should be subscribing like to my emails as, podi as a podiatrist, other podiatry emails, and then Al's email just to see how it's done. I think, and so what I do in my Google is I have an optional folder and an, it puts everything into an optional folder. Then I can like curate and see kind of what Al does or what other people do. So I have like based on their names. So it doesn't go into my main e email inbox, but that way you can learn how, what people are talking about in the way that they're sending out emails. So it helps me. Then you can kind of have your, we call it a swipe file. Um, so Al, tell us a little bit background about your, your marketing interest and kind of what you're working on with these emails and these entertainment things. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, um, I, I'm a marketer, so don't hold that against me right off the bat. <laughs> I just came from a conference recently where I was the only marketer in, in all this mastermind. And I got kept getting side-eyed the whole time. And I'm like, I promise I'm not like a normal marketer. <laughs> so basically what I the, the what we focus the marketing switch on is really um finding, identifying your ideal clients, um, really just finding who they are, finding where we can find them, attract them, retain them, and you know, really convert them and bring them into your system. And a lot of that is from people who are already in your list. So you've got this list built up. And if you don't have a list built up, please acquire the list of your patients, clients, you know, prospects, anything like that, put them in some kind of good system, like a CRM type thing or something like that, and approach them. And the, the big thing I'm harping on recently is how do you approach them? And Don nailed on the head is giving people good, valuable information through email. And that's kind of what I focus on a lot is I uh, have the weekly email, which, you know, I copy off other smart people like Don mentioned, uh, Dan Kennedy, same kind of thing. Nice, good, fun, productive email people actually want to read is, is kind of where I'm focusing at. And I help people do that. Yeah. So I, just in terms of um, Al's approach, I want to simplify it for everyone. So you've probably been to the doctor's websites where they have like a free book, okay? And so the really, the easiest way is having a free, we call it a lead magnet. Um, try to get one thing that you can offer. Most people would want, I would, I would say, give them something free that's of benefit and then say, and by the way, you get my newsletter. Very rarely will someone just want a podiatry newsletter, okay? Um, you know, unless you're amazing, but they will want something free. So it could be a free, like I, the most, my favorite one is Larry Huppman. He has this shoe buying guide. It's like a shoe buying guide and he's got a list of shoes. Like who doesn't want that? Everyone wants that. And so you could even have that as your lead and say, by the way, we're also going to send you our emails. So if you haven't made that, you can go to mine, which is drpelter.com. You can go to my stuff and you can like plagiarize mine or just kind of make your own version. We call it, um, what do you call it? Modeling someone else's. You don't want to copy it word for word, but you want to kind of model what they did. It's real easy. I did my first one in just Google Docs and you just make it, lay it out, put a cover. You can make it on Canva and save it as a PDF and, and you're set. A CRM, you can do any of them. Um, you know, MailChimp's an easy one up to like 500 people. I think it's free. Once you get more sophisticated, but if you have your own list, then you you download your list from your EMR, which is electronic medical record, and you download that, and then you send them stuff. And so what I do is I have it downloaded, and then every month I add the new people onto my onto my list. And then as Al was talking about sending out, um, he said informational. I think it's entertaining is more important than information. So talk a little bit about like what you. I know you have a format. Talk about your format and kind of how a podiatrist could do that format. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you nailed on the head when you said entertainment. It's it's really what it is. It's I try to say eighty percent entertainment, twenty percent informational. Because I mean, I'm going to say something that's going to be I don't want you to take offense to it, but no one wants to hear about podiatry all the time. They don't want to. A lot of my clients are tax professionals, and I'm like, people really don't want to hear about taxes all the time. Do not send them information constantly about that. Send them things that are fun, entertaining, that they like to see and like to hear about, and can actually help them in the end too. So for example, obviously I'm a marketing company, so I'll send a little marketing tip. Business owners, I mean, you're all marketers. If you're a business owner, sorry, you know, I now bless the all marketers. So <laughs> something that could actually help them out and entertain them. I get people come in and say, oh, I love your newsletter because it has a Sudoku in it or something like that. Fantastic, great. You're opening my stuff. You're reading things out there. I'm staying in front of you, top of mind type thing. And what I always say is that your most valuable resource you have is your list. 
It really is. I mean, if you were to go to sell everything right now, you got brick and mortar, you've got the tools to like that, the people, but really your list is, is one of the top things you're going to have. So how are you engaging with that list? How are you making that list, you know, robust and, and, and bring them around? Because a lot of people will say that, what's your number one source of clients? Oh, it's referrals or word of mouth. Okay, well, what are you doing to, to keep that going? Just sending a, a, a basic newsletter that can be fun and entertaining. And if you have a section in there that says, hey, thanks for the referral, Dr. Pelto, it was fantastic. You're showing your list that you're getting referrals and kind of saying that they, everyone else should be referring you also. So that's boosting the referral source, boosting word of mouth by staying in front of them and putting yourself in the positive mindset of a fun and entertaining newsletter. That's kind of a break from life that they get to read. So yeah, I, I think two main ones. there's a, a lot of companies that do newsletters for us. And I, I want to speak to our profession. They offer to do newsletters, but they're only informational. Yeah. And, and, I think you could get them as like a template, but you'd have to add something to it. In mm -hmm. the past, I've done, there's like, there's a couple of them you can buy um, and, and they came in with some with some Sudoku things or health tips. But really all I do is each day, I try to think of a funny story and and I, and I, I write it down in my phone in the notes section. Yeah. And then what I do is I just put some notes and this is the what I've been doing now. I write down some notes, maybe take a picture, and then I send it to Chat GPT and I say, make this for a newsletter, make it a little bit more entertaining. So then it makes it a, it like spices it up because I'm not the best copyright, but it, it it spices it up and then I copy and paste it. And I I I arrange everything in something called Notion. So um Notion has a calendar, and so it has every Wednesday all my templates there, and I just fill in the information and you can set it as like to do, doing, and done. And then, so I, 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 it's the reason I do it there is because my, my email provider is like Kajabi. So I have to log in, design it, and it's just a pain in the butt to do. Yeah. So I do it somewhere else. Does it, and then once I design it, I do them all at once. I, I upload them to the Kajabi. How do you do it? Do you design it right in your email server or do you do it in a docs or something like that? Yeah, I actually do it directly into my email server. Well, I usually write things first in the docs, then I bring it over to my email server. So I have a uh, keep which is a CRM type thing, just marketing outreach system type thing. So yeah, I'll build it inside of there. And I do the exact same thing with the notes. I will like write it on a note. Oh, this is a good story to have. Or I take a lot of pictures all the time. Every, all my friends, I'm the picture guy. Because you never know whenever you might have a picture of something interesting and oh, check this out or whatever. And then that if I forget about it, I'll go back later on. Like, I need something to write about this week. Oh, look at my pictures. I remember when I, like the other day, I was working on my car. Just take a picture of the part I'm changing out. And then I wrote a story about changing the part out or me questioning how much is my time worth? <laughs> should I really be fixing this car? Or should I take I hire someone to do it? <laughs> I'll do that a lot. And and I and I know everyone that's listening to this, if you're if you're doctors, and most people are, you're saying, Well, I have to be professional. I have to be like, what are people gonna think? Okay, so two things. I was doing my my newsletters once a once a month. And my I told my colleagues I was gonna do it once a week. And they're like, no way anyone's gonna read anything once a week. And they said, it should all be professional. And I said, guys, I'm just going to try this out. And I have to tell you, I, I, I've I, been doing this probably about three or three months now with the story base. So I start with a story. I might be talking about how we renovated our house, we painted our house, or I put up a new shower curtain, just dumb stuff. But people like to look at the humanity of their doctors. That's what they really want. They're, it's almost like a soap opera. They're like eavesdropping on your life. And they like that because otherwise you're like so standoffish. And so I, I really can't emphasize enough. If you have a hard time doing it, like subscribe to mine so you can learn how to do it, but it's made all the difference. And then I usually do that. And then um, I started to record shorts of my partners telling shorts and I put the question, we're usually answering a question. So I'll put the shorts in there. And then there's always a call to action, like to make an appointment or learn about something on the bottom. And they're an easy read. But, and I also sometimes put in questions, like the best question was we have a, one of my partners here is very fast. And I said, well, what was his fastest mile? And it was four minutes and 20 seconds. And like, so I put it up, but I got like 30 responses via email of people right. like guessing. And then the next week I'll ask them like, what was his sport in college? And they answer back. So having that give and take, people like to participate in that. That's what I found. You probably get a lot of answers to yours, right? People commenting yeah. on your kids and stuff, right? Yeah. That's exactly right. I mean, people do business with people that they know, like, and trust. But the main part of that is they do business with people. They don't yeah. do business with with doctors. They want to do with people all the time. And yeah. if you can pull down that veil and say, I'm a real person, I'm right here with you, and you can relate to them, 
gold. That is just absolutely gold. People love that stuff. So if you, and this is the one thing I find us as doctors, we're very bad at. We're very good at like going out and trying to get new patients. And like everyone's so focused on getting out new referral sources, new patients, new things like that. But the 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 money is in the patients that you currently have. And we have these like our list is like sixteen thousand patients. It's like a it's a huge list. And 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 if you it takes some time to clean it up, but um, once you start doing that, it, it's gonna it's gonna be golden for you. So um, any Definitely. other like um, technology things? Because you're kind of the efficiency guy. Any other technology things to make it more efficient or repurposing the content or anything like that that you would have yeah i mean you definitely you mentioned chat gpt and of course everyone knows where that's at you can absolutely use that um that's a great starting point type thing if you have like something you want to write about you can go in there and say write me a framework for this and that might inspire a little bit more writing or you can go in there and say act as a copywriter and make this more personable or whatever and that can smooth things out for you if you're not necessarily the, the best you know emotion based type writer type thing Chat DPT is fantastic for that. Just try not to have all your stuff written by Chat DPT. I, I fully believe people can tell. <laughs> I think people can tell when things are written by computers. But there's definitely that. Um, and automations in general, like I, I, I hit CRM again. If you can automate things inside your business, follow ups, things like that, you can, if you have some free time, let's say you have a, a gap in your calendar for about an hour. All right, cool. It's maybe a Tuesday and you send your emails on Thursday, or whatever. Write your email as much as you can on Tuesday. Schedule it off for Thursday. Yep. It goes out while you're doing something else, you know? You can always try to find the optimal time. Write it whenever you can. Schedule it in their head. And that, once again, that's a CRM, like, keep and things like that. So, yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, so, besides, so I would say the number one takeaway is doing a, a newsletter weekly. Um, what other things, um, let's talk about the, either the current list or getting patients to come back. Any other, like, marketing tips that you want to talk about that are that are in sure. your wheelhouse that you're interested in. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned lead magnets and lead magnets is a, is a fantastic thing. So when someone is either comes to your website or wants to be, you want to draw in in some way, it's very hard to go from a first date of like, maybe they saw your website or maybe you ran an ad or something like that. That's the first date. And when you want them to, to come in and become a patient, that's like, will you marry me on the first date? It's, it can be a lot. <laughs> it can be a lot to it. And that scares people off. Sometimes people are not ready for it and no pun intended, but they're sticking their toes and their, their feet in the water a little bit, you know, <laughs> and uh, the way they do that is by getting valuable information that can really help them out. And that's through with things like lead magnets. Exactly. It, like the, the shoe buying guide. Perfect. Or the, you know, the five steps to helping, you know, plantar fasciitis. I'm going to say it wrong. That's that yep. One. That's right. <laughs> things like that. That can start getting things in there. And a lot of people say, well, I'm you know, giving away the, the secret sauce. Or I'm, but now, once you give someone good, valuable information, you become a trusted authority in that subject. And then whenever they have a problem later on, or they have a friend of a problem later on, you're going to be top of mind because you've given them free information. You put them on a new newsletter list. You've entertained them. And now whenever they are ready to finally address their concern or finally fix the problem they have, You've been right there. You've helped them along the way, and you're going to be the first one they call. They're not going to Google and find you know somebody near me. You're going to be the person they're going to call because you gave them free, valuable, and entertaining information. Yeah, and, and I want to go back and kind of show where the errors could could come in there. So a lot of us, a lot of websites, they have the free lead magnet, but they don't have then the entertaining email that comes out weekly. Um, a lot of times what I do is I do a free book on plantar fasciitis and then there's like three or four emails that go a little bit more in depth because no one's going to read your book, first of all. Uh, and, and so <laughs> I might, let's say I have the five points for plantar fasciitis, then the next five days, they're going to get five emails, one in each point, and then it's going to drop them into that entertaining sequence. Yeah. So whereas most people, what they do is they give them the free download and that's it. Yeah. Okay. Another thing that you can do, if you're really giving good information, you can ask for name, email, and phone number. Okay. Phone number is a little bit more challenging. Might not give it to you. They might put in a fake phone number, but it means the world. When patients download those things and I see a phone number there, I call them up and say, I got, I got, I got a minute here because it sends it to my email. I have a minute. I just say, Hey, how are you doing? Any other questions? They're like, wow, the doctor's calling me. Like it, yeah. you know, it, 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 it doesn't take me any time and I have a few minutes, but really shows that I, I, I and I do care, you know? And yeah. so, so doing that's, stuff like that really takes it to the next level. Absolutely. There's another good software out there. It's called Bonjuro. If you ever want to look that up, um, it does the same kind of thing where basically someone downloads your free report or contacts you in some way or something like that. Maybe you have a consultation scheduled, something like that. And it'll be an app on your phone. 
and the app will go ping and you open your phone up and you press a button it says you have a new lead or this person downloaded your report or whatever record them a video in two seconds you press the button and say hey dr pelto i see you scheduled a consultation with me look forward to seeing you on tuesday okay thanks bye and press a button and it sends that video embedded into an email directed to them not a link to it but the actual video embedded into their email but wasn't there another one that was out there that was like what was it called there was another one they did a lot of advertising. Yeah, a lot of similar ones. I like that. That's, that's yeah. a, I've tried to do it other ways, but like sending a link or, but I, yeah. I like that one better because it embeds it. Can you even yeah, request testimonials that way? Like send them the link so they can record a testimonial? Yeah, you can definitely do the same thing. Yep. They have, they have technology for all that stuff. Anything you can think of, is, it's always out there. So it's great. But yeah, talking about personal care, man, the, the call is fantastic. But I love, I love the video and the email because when you send an email out, it's waiting there for whatever they're ready. It's Whenever asynchronous. That's what I like. I like asynchronous. Yes. Yeah. Whenever you call them, you're kind of stopping them from whatever they're doing. And you're saying, hey, okay, now, I'm, okay, I'm in the middle of something and you call me. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's a great call. But you're still sort of interrupting them. When you send them an email or even a text message, they get to it whenever they get to it, whenever their mindset is ready for that. And they're ready to watch the video. I think that's, I love I like that, that idea. I love coming in on the right mindset for them. That's good. That's yeah. good. That's good. But Thank you. If you can call, man. Oh, yeah. If you're not afraid to pick up the phone call, whoo, or pick up the phone, you're doing great. It's, everyone is so terrified to pick up the phone too. So, well, they're asking me for help, you know, and I, I like to help people, and and if I if I can, but I really like that one about doing it for like makeshift ways of doing it. But I like that method. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, a month or something like that, like most of them. Say that again. Is it like thirty dollars a month, like most of them? Yeah, something cheap. It's nothing crazy at all. It's really not. And once again, you can embed this with other, with other software, with other CRM, stuff like that. It can ping you automatically if certain things happen or whatever. If you're having a problem with like no-shows for appointments or whatever, that's a great one. If you haven't, if your no-show starts ticking up a little bit, send them a video personalized. Hey, Dr. Pelta, I'll see you at eight o'clock on Tuesday, right? You know, <laughs> and they will show up for that because it's like, oh man, now I have to. He sent me a video. That's nice. <laughs> I, I like that. That's a good, that's a good... What other technology? Let's go into technology. I like these automations or technology that you like. Yeah. Um, man, there's so many out there. It's it's hard to describe. <laughs> Let's see here. Or the ones uh, you use. I like actual practical, like what you, you actually use in your business. Yeah. So yeah, I do I do the Bonjoro. I love that one. I think that one cuts right through it. What do you do any for like getting online reviews or anything like that? Um, yeah. So I have an automatic review campaign. So at a certain point after working with a client, I will ask them for the review. And that's always dependent on what industry you're in. You want to give them the review link at the absolute best time to give them a review link. When Just when you solve their pain and it's their first day when they're walking out and they've got no more pain anymore, send them the review link right then. You know, like, man, that's that's fantastic. Now they're in a great mood, five stars, good to go. Absolutely. So, and one big thing I always see people do wrong about getting reviews is they'll say, oh, Google me and, and give me a Google review. No. Give them the actual link that they click on, and it's the five stars appear right there. It takes them one click. If they want to type something in, they can, but one click, submit, and that's it. You're gonna, you'll triple the amount of reviews you've got. Yeah, and you can get that if you go to your Google My Business account. They have a review link. So you go to Google My Business, there's a review, review link right there, and you can just copy and paste that. And send exactly. That. It. Exactly. It. Yeah, that's that's absolute gold. And so, uh, once again, it goes back to your list. If you haven't shaken the tree with your list, if you haven't shaken that tree and get some reviews to fall out, hit your list up again and, and say, hey, it's it's review, give me some reviews or whatever. I'm looking to boost them up. And I had one client who was a, a a CPA and he only had like 12 reviews. And I'm like, let's hit your list up. So we kind of warmed the list up a little bit. So we made sure that he was still being a, a his emails were getting opened and people were liking what's going on. He's the right place. Sent the thing out and he ended up getting 85 reviews. He went from 13 to like 96 in one email. And we're like, this is Wow, she does a long time ago to type thing. Uh, I have a question now about like these emails. I send out one a week, okay? Kind of similar format. One time I changed the format. It was like a New Year's one. I changed the header and people no. contacted me thinking that maybe it was spam, you know, like because no, yeah. I, I changed it. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the question I have is, so these, so what I, f I feel sometimes if I ask for too many things, I cause confusion in the email. 
-hmm. You know, I'm yep. telling a story and educating them. And then my call to action is always like make an appointment. So would you recommend like, instead of making the call to action be an appointment, I would just ask for, hey, this week we're trying something different, give us a review. Or would you recommend a separate email, like email them one extra time? Um, I do like separate emails because here's the one thing you hit on also is the consistency of timing. So if you're going to send it out on a Thursday at 9 a.m., which is one of the best times to send an email newsletter, by the way, Thursday at 9 a.m., um, if you're going to send it out Thursday at 9 a.m. and suddenly you email them on a Monday, they're kind of like, whoa, what's this? It's it's breaking the, the pattern. That really gets their attention. Oh, they're asking for a review. Cool. Here you go. Uh, okay. Yeah. So if I ever run a sale, which is like almost never, <laughs> if I ever run a sale on something, I'll run it on an off day and almost always, you know, sales or other type things will, will come out of it all the time. Because it's almost, you know, pattern interrupting. It's just suddenly like, oh, wow, what's going on here? You're not a Thursday type thing. That's a but good as, far as, Go as far as calls to action go, um, the big thing on an email is making sure that you, they have something to click on at all times. And that, that doesn't have to necessarily be schedule a linking or whatever. It could just be, a, hey, check out this article I found on this, or you know, go over here and check this out. Because when someone's clicking on your email, it's telling their email service provider and your email service provider, all your emails around, that you're a legitimate source, that you're a legitimate emailer. So you're much less likely to go into spam and junk by having them actually engage. So people opening it up will help out, but also someone clicking internally will help get your emails delivered to everybody else too. Because that is a challenge, unfortunately, that email is never going to get over is someone's going to go to junk. The more clicks you get, the less likely it is to go to junk. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we've covered a, a lot of things here, Al. Like for, yeah. for I think it's a lot of beneficial things. Um. And once again, how emails, about I'm gonna emails free emails free like it's yeah. it's free you're not running ads it's free they're right there <laughs> like, stop leaving money on the table <laughs> tell me tell help me help me use better so I've been playing around for the last month doing YouTube shorts mm -hmm. um so as I have a, have a patient I might talk about and I'm only talking about what I call largest check patients so like orthotics shockwave stuff that really brings in revenue I, I'm not talking about the stuff I don't want to come in just the um. What I've heard is that like people talk about um, always having like an offer in every, even every short that you do. Um, but right now, like when I do the short, it's more informational, like teaching about, about things like that. I don't really have an offer, but, I, and also I don't, I don't know if shorts are clickable. Like if I put a short, would I, would I put it underneath like another website? Should I get a vanity website like footbooks.com or something like that? Or how do I, or would I say it at the end? Hey, by the way, if you like this, I have some books or how do I do it? Or I just put it printed in there. What do you recommend in terms of taking short form content and making it direct response? Sure. Yeah. And I mean, that's a big problem with any kind of social media and things like that. Let me just harp a little bit on social media and I'll give you my, my spiel on social media. There's really only two reasons for social media. So well, let's say three reasons. One is to run ads on, but let's put that aside. Number, number two would be, or I guess number one would be building a community up inside of your social media so that eventually you can, you know, monetize that community. And that takes a, a full-time job to, to build a community up in social media with people commenting and you're responding back and forth and you're putting things in there. I'm sure you guys got a day job you got, you got to do instead of running social media. So I'm not a huge fan of, of building up followings inside of social media myself. And the other, the number two part of social media is when someone sees your business, they may go onto like Facebook, let's say, and check you out to see if you're, is this person posting on social media? Okay, yes, they're still in business right now. That's pretty much it. Build a community up to sell to and prove that you're a business that's functioning, even though anyone can start a business on Facebook and make it look like it's a lie, but that's not the point. Either way, those are the two main things for like okay. typical social media, let's say Facebook type thing. So as long as you're putting out decent content all the time, it's good. What people don't understand is if you like, I, I'm harping on social on Facebook a little bunch, but if you put something on Facebook, a post on Facebook, the only people who are going to see it are your followers. It's never going to go to anybody else other than the people who are following you. So you're preaching to your own choir. So you don't have to put up I mean, just enough touch points. Same thing with kind of your email list. Enough touch points is great. Um, YouTube shorts. It's, I haven't really delved into that too much, um, but I always say that if you're going to put any kind of content out there and you're going to send anybody anywhere, don't send them to your main site. Like you mentioned the vanity URL, like a specific, what's called a landing page that just has like just a, a little bit of copy and your call to action of 
schedule an appointment, I would say send them there. Because once they go to your website, you know, your website is fantastic, right? You've got so much great information. They're going to see that. They're going to watch this thing. And they're going to see this report. And they're going to watch this video. And they're going to see a cat video. And they get distracted and they're gone. So, yeah, so only only one, like a squeeze page. Only one, yeah. like get, get my books here. Exactly. Put your email squeeze and page. get my books or do my mm -hmm. three-minute foot quiz or something like that. Yes. If they're really interested in you enough to, and they want to become clients and they don't want to do this one, they will Google you and find your website and then go from there type thing. But squeeze page is there just to squeeze it in there and really convert. Now, la last question before you get to tell people about you and your business. Um, <laughs> I, I'm a big repurposer of content. So yeah. would it be appropriate to take the same stuff you're sending out to my email list and making each one of those into a blog post just so I can have new stuff on my website? Mm -hmm. Um Yep. Is there any problem with that? No, 100% great. So yeah, it's two different worlds, blogs and emails and social media. They're, they're completely different worlds. So blog, so like, let's go back to what's, the whole point of a blog, the whole point of is, is SEO, that search engine optimization. And that is just to get your website to rank higher in Google. That's it. So SEO, can, there's technical and blah, blah, blah. Really all it is is to get your website seen more when someone Googles an issue of some kind. And the question is, how are they going to Google it? But they're going to Google it and said, you know, what's this pain in the arch of my foot or whatever, you know, type thing. If you have a blog article that literally has that question and answers it right there, Google will see that, read that and say, that's good, valuable content right there. Because no matter what you believe, Google wants to deliver the best content to their users. That's why they're the best, because they want to deliver the best. And they do that by the SEO rankings, like providing different things. And the best way to get SEO rankings is to keep your website updated. Keep always improving your website. And the best way to improve it is by putting blogs in there. Yeah. If you're putting blogs about, you know, repurposing content, even personal content, it's fine in blogs. It's still showing your website's active. It's alive. You're not dead anymore. Google, trust me, we're still here, you know, like, and you're answering those questions. So That's if you go awesome. to social media and email list, Google's not seeing that. You wanted to see it by repurposing yeah. and putting on blogs, exactly like you said. Well, good, good. Well, I'll t tell if you want to get get on your list or have you yeah. your stories. How do they do that? Sure, yeah. Uh, the marketing switch dot com. I think I'll put, yeah, sure. I'll do that. Uh, the marketing switch dot com. <laughs> Go there. You'll you'll scroll down for about two seconds. You're gonna pop up that says, "Hey, join for the best content in the world" or whatever. I don't know what it says, but <laughs> sign up there. Um, never spam you. I'm not gonna be pushing sales on you. You're gonna literally just hear me talk about working on my crappy car or <laughs> and see funny things and stuff like that. So yeah, good. Well, I, I've been getting them for a while. I've, I've enjoyed them. That's the inspiration. So thank you. Thanks, Val, for your time. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me. Hey guys, so I just finished the interview with Al. Um, Al does great work. I would really join the marketing switch, go get his emails. Um, also, um, I want you to go to mine. You can go to drpelto.com download any of my books, you can get it. And um, uh, finally, I would uh, recommend you uh, joining at Podiatry Practice Mastery. If you haven't joined that, we have the uh, Practice Mastery Academy where I kind of go do a deep dive of, of all these things. Um, shoot me an email if you have any other questions. Um, the questions tend to be what I focus on for content. So if you have questions, uh, send it to me and, and I'll let you know. My email is don at podiatrypracticemastery.com. Thanks.